Afari is one of those blank slate commanders where its ability is so generic that you can really imprint whatever type of deck you want onto it. So if you want to run it as a token of flash or blink commander, go for it. I just think there are better options for those types of decks. So when I try to find what the essence of Afara is and how to build around it, only one thing comes to mind. If you stare long enough, it becomes clear. Afara reminds me of a card that would be in the vein of Aristic Study, Esper Sentinel, or Mystic Remora. Except with Afara, you don't need to slow down the game by asking if they're paying the one. It's entirely in your control. And that's how I think you should build Afara. Control. Control to me is about the Holy Trinity. Swords to Plowshares, Counterspell, Wrath of God. So we build this deck to control the field and win through persevering creatures and effects. As we go through the deck, check for this icon on the bottom left edge of the cards. This symbol means that the cards shown on the left side of the screen are just a few alternatives that you can run for variety or budget. Now onto the deck. We'll start with cards whose primary function is to naturally generate Afara triggers. Shark Typhoon, Keeper of the Accord, and Skrelv's Hive will just make creatures as you play. While well, Luminarch Ascension and Nadir Kraken require some mana upkeep, but keep putting out creatures. Vincer the Sojourner can blink a permanent, a creature will trigger Afara, but don't forget about blinking a mana rock or land to have more mana on your opponent's turn. Likewise, Halo Fountain provides some level of versatility. Remember, you can untap a creature that just attacked to activate it, or use it to untap one of your creatures like Shorakai Genesis Engine, which is just great value. Draw two, discard one, make a pilot, and then draw again on the next turn's upkeep. White Main Lion can save and replay a creature, but you can also just bounce itself and trigger a far for just two mana. If you want a little bit more value here, Stone Cloaker can do the same thing at a higher price, but it can also exile cards from graveyards. I've started to group card draw and tutors and whatnot into a more generalized term I'm testing as hand sculpting. If you uh, have a better cohesive term, please let me know in the comments below. We start with Thalia's Lancers and Search for Glory, who both function as spot tutoring. I specifically like getting a Vincer the Sojourner with Thalia's Lancers, then blinking the Lancers to get another legendary card and have that tutor train just keep going. Moonbless Cleric and Enlightened Tutor both let you get better access to the many powerful enchantments in this deck. Among those being Aristic Study, Mystic Remora, and Teferi's Aegis Insight, all very powerful card draw in the right instances. Esper Sentinel, Weathered Wayfarer, and Archivist of Ligma are all cheap creatures with advantage built in that you can get out early and still leave reactive mana up. Alms Collector is there because we are the ones who want to be doing the drawing, not your opponents. Seagate Restoration probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't a flip card with a land on the other side, but the ability to make sure you hit your land and then later on in the game double your hand size is really great. We start off easily enough with Soul Ring and Arcane Signet because... We then continue with pretty standard fare in Azoria Signet, Talisman of Progress, Felwar Stone, Mind Stone, Thought Vessel, Everflowing Chalice, and just for funsies, Smothering Tithe. Here's where things get a little weird. Sten Paranoid Partisan and Scheming Fence are part of this new wave of Azorius Ramp. Sten can choose enchantments to get Afara out a turn early, then has a self-blink to potentially trigger Afara. Scheming Fence is there to, let's say 99% of the time, steal a mana rock from an opponent. Sarah Paragon and Deep Gnome Terramancer are two sides of the Fetchland coin. Sarah Paragon lets me get double duty off my own Fetchlands, while Deep Gnome Terramancer gives me ramp when opponents use Fetchlands, among other things. Then we come to the Power Couple. Urza Lord Protector, and the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. Urza is pretty good by itself because you do have a lot of sorceries and instants. The Might Stone and Weak Stone is technically ramp, I guess, but it's the enter the battlefield effect that's very versatile, and it's just fun to meld them. Basic stuff up here first, we have a Solitude, Swords to Plowshares, and Path to Exile. Fairly standard stuff. Then we move into removal that can hit creatures and more with Generous Gift, Resculpt, and Skyclave Apparition. We run a small package focused on artifact and enchantment removal, consisting of Cathar Commando, Thieving Skydiver, and Heliod's Intervention. I round it off with a couple of wild cards that I'm currently testing out. Giver of Runes has worked well so far. It's not insanely impactful, but can be a nuisance and does provide a non-attacking way to tap for Halo Fountain. Abolith Spawn has worked well for me, I guess. I never seem to get it when I really want it. Haven't really had a grand slam with it yet, just a few solid hits. Okay, let's have a chat. In this deck, I have Fierce Guardianship, Mana Drain, and Force of Will. 
These are in no way needed. I would say the most needed is Mana Drain because it can work out as a turn two ramp to get a far out a turn early or so, but don't feel the need to use these or spend money to get them. They're nice, but not necessary. And Force of Will is almost out of the deck anyways, I just don't want to lose that much card advantage. I also run Dovin's Veto, Glen Alendra Archmage, and Voracious Great Shark. We have a couple of flex counter spell type slots with Narset's Reversal and Teferi's Protection. They're really good. One of the great strengths of Azorius is flexibility of board wipes. I tend to skip cards like Wrath of God mostly because I want a bit more options in my board wipes. I look more for cards like Farewell, Austere Command, and Cyclonic Rift. Ways to potentially wipe the board, but without ruining any particular advantage I may have at the moment. I also run Tragic Arrogance, the original Elish Norn, and White Sun's Twilight to round out my mass removal. I run 8 utility lands starting with Wasteland, Hall of Heliod's Generosity, Igonjo, and Ottawara. With Hall, Igonjo, and Ottawara being key as they can be searched for with Search for Glory and Thalia's Lancers. For extra utility, I run Mystic Sanctuary, Glasspool Mimic, and Castle Ardenvale and Keljoran Outpost for a bit of extra token generation. The rest of the deck consists of mana lands. It's an Azorius deck, so fill in whatever you have. The only particulars I have are Ancient Tomb, Arid Mesa, Flooded Strand, Marsh Flats, and Scalding Tarn. Ancient Tomb because I want to get a far out as soon as possible, and Tomb basically works like a ramp. I do think the fetch lands are important to pull double duty with Sarah Paragon. After that, it's just the best blue white duels that I have. None of these are particularly important, but I will mention that I run a few suboptimal ones that have the plains and islands basic land type. Those assist with the fetch lands as well as stuff like Deep Gnome Terramancer. For basics, I run eight planes, the new Capenna, what I like to call Bioshock lands, and five basic islands. I prefer the Dominary United stained glass foils. This deck is fairly easy to pilot from a strategy perspective. Get out of Farah as quickly as possible. I would keep any hand with three lands, a ramp, and any Afara activator. Creatures, token generators, whatever. From there on, just play smart and try to control the board. Slow everyone else down. Pick your time to make a splashy move. The most reliable route to victory I've found is a Shark Typhoon protected with counter spells. You can still cycle it if you need to early in the game since you can return it later with Hall of Heliod's Generosity. My particularly favorite line is to get Athalia's Lancers to go get Venser, then use Venser to blink the Lancers to go get Urza, and then the next turn get the Mightstone and the Meekstone. Then meld them together and you've got a pretty strong control setup. And that's my take on Afara Control. If control isn't really your style, feel free to check out my video on a super aggressive creature based Gix Yogmoth Praetor EDH deck right here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.